So the first race of the of the World Championships starting in not much more than an hour, but I've just got uh, Ewan McNichol to talk to us just for a couple of minutes. Um, Ewan, you're pretty new to this fleet, aren't you? In fact, you're very new. You <laughs> very might be new. the newest Absolutely. fleet. Absolutely, yep, very when did new. You, when did you first start sailing a falling mile? Um, well, I probably clocked about less than 10 hours now. Less so than 10? probably had five or six, seven days maybe. Yeah. That's the same number of hours that Spitfire pilots used to have in World War II, isn't it? Yeah, but exactly. Well, I, I certainly probably give myself about as much chance as some of those pilots. So. Of coming back, that yeah, is. So you may or may back. not come back exactly. to after the race today. Yeah. And I hear the sharks out there as well, just to add to the fun. Apparently, I, I mean, I had a little swim out there when my boat sailed away from me the other night and the thought did cross my mind, so. Interesting. <laughs> now, um, I, I know that uh, you, you did a lot of high performance sailing. I know you've just come back from the Sydney Hobart race where you were one of the helmsmen on a winning boat. Yep. You also sell 49ers, you're a coach to Olympic, various Olympic sailors. So you've got a pretty good broad background of sailing. I say it would be an understatement. When, in, in terms of how you've approached sailing this boat and in terms of what the things that you've already learned, the big things you've already learned in those 10 hours, yep. can you just explain to us uh, what, are, what, what are the big things about this boat? So to be able to get a boat like this, step into it and then have some fun or maybe do better than that and go competitive, serious racing, what are the sorts of issues that people need to know about in your, sure. your experience? I guess um, for me the focus has been, you know, I'm lucky enough to be friends with some guys that are at the front of the fleet. So the focus has been getting equipment that I think is not going to let me down. Yeah. Um, and you know the the subtleties of setting up that equipment I'm I'm not quite familiar with. So yeah. using as much information from those guys as I can to to just you know start from a place where um, I'm going to be somewhere in the in the ballpark. Yes. Um, these boats are very very different to a lot of the sailing that anyone does. Let alone I mean I'm lucky enough to have sailed some really cool boats, but. Uh, the concepts involved in these boats are, are different again. So there's a, there's a fundamental technical setup that you just have to get right to be I able think to sell so, properly. Definitely, yeah. The you know the foil management, the wand management, um, how you deal with all of those things. You, you need a basic setup, and if, and, yeah, and if if you don't have that, then life's going to be difficult for your first few sales. So for yeah. sure. And, and once you've got that, that basic set up right, so in other words, once the foils and all the bits and pieces are working, in terms of uh, the skill level uh, required to actually be able to launch it, go for a sail, come back, how, how, how would you um, kind of rate that? I'd say, you know, it's like most boats, if you pick the weather and you pick your time, you know, today, for instance, is a nice little six to eight knot breeze at the moment, it's probably perfect conditions for learning. You really can't do too much damage in this sort of condition. I think there's probably a switch that turns on somewhere around the mid-teens when life becomes a lot more difficult, like, like in a lot of boats. But yeah. um, I think too with these boats, the sea state's a, a major factor. Flat water's really, really nice and bumps are terrifying. <laughs> well, and what's interesting is you clearly these are, these are technical boats and there's a lot of, lot of stuff to sort out. But people from all sorts of backgrounds seem to be drawn to the class. And yeah. All over the world, we yeah. have 112 boats here. Absolutely. And, and not everyone's from an Olympic background by any means, are they? But not at all. I think the, there's an element of you know, good old fashioned amateur development class, which is great. You know, a lot of guys, um, you know, bring their ideas, bring their thoughts, um, you know, some a little left field, some, you know, a little bit more mainstream, but there's, you know, there's a definite cross section. Um, you could say from all sailing backgrounds. So. And, and, and clearly, you've said to us at the beginning, you've only had a total of 10 hours in this. You're a professional sailor. You, you don't like doing anything uh, half-cocked. Mm. Why exactly have you turned up here? Clearly, you've got no chance of winning, and yep. you, you, you know that. Yep. Why have you turned up here after 10 hours to come and sell them off in a world championship in your own backyard? What's the motivation for you? Um, I guess, you, you know, the, the motivation is just to see how the good guys do it. And if, if this was a class that um, was attractive to me because it's... You know, a lot of my friends sail it. It's a one-man class. It's um, the sort of boat that I'll be able to do in my spare time, and I have a lot of fun doing. It's very fast. Um, it's a fitness exercise. So there's a lot of challenges that are, are going to be, you know, really, really interesting for me to take on. Do you reckon you're in this class after this event? Oh, definitely. You're here for, yeah, here no, for a while. no. This is not a. As you say, you know, I'm not going to delude myself into thinking I'm going to be any good this week. So it's definitely a, a building thing and just to have a good look around and, and learn it. And I guess the challenge is in a 112 boat fleet, 10 hours on the clock, how good, how, how, how well Absolutely. could you do? So how well could you do? Um, to be honest, you know, without cheating on too much in anger against other boats, maybe give me a couple of races and I'll get back to you. But for me, like in most things and, you know, whether it be coaching or sailing, as long as you have some sort of progression, and you're learning a lot and you're getting better throughout the regatta, that's probably my goal. So we'll keep our eyes on you to be the, the most progressive boat during the regatta? Well, that would be a good goal to start That'd with. Be good. For sure. Well, we'll come back and talk to you in two days' time and ask you the same question. Yeah. Tell us what you think. Thanks, Mike. Ewan, thanks for your help today. Best of luck on the race course. Not a problem.